history of Al Capone's vaults is hosted by Geraldo Rivera. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the old Lexington Hotel, where 60 years ago, during the height of the Roaring Twenties and Prohibition, this once lavish building belonged or was the headquarters for the notorious gangster Al Capone. Directly beneath me, in this hotel's rubble-strewn basement, a massive concrete chamber has been discovered, and there is evidence to suggest that that vault once belonged to Al Capone, the richest and most powerful gangster of his time. Now, what, if anything, that vault contains, we don't know. This is an adventure you and I are going to be taking together, because one way or the other, the mystery is going to be solved tonight. We're going to break open that vault, and we're going to step inside. We're also going to step back into history. History of Chicago in the Roaring Twenties. It's a history written with the rapid fire of Tommy Gun, held by gangsters like Dion O'Banya, Jaime Weiss, Frank Nitti, and of course the ruthless and cunning Scarface Al Capone. We'll show you how Capone used murder to carve out a multi-million dollar criminal empire, an empire based on illegal booze, prostitution, and gambling. We'll explore the private rooms, the secret passages, the hidden stairways of his once luxurious hotel headquarters. We'll descend 40 feet beneath the streets of Chicago into a vast and little known tunnel system, one that may have been used by Scarface Al Capone and his men. Here in Chicago, in Miami, in Los Angeles, and on San Francisco's Alcatraz Island, we'll talk to people who knew Al Capone personally. Capone was an evil man. He seemed like, just like a big roly-poly teddy bear to me. He was just like any other hoodlum. He was lovable. He was sweet. Who do you think murdered your husband? Al Capone, then. The Lexington Hotel here on Michigan Avenue in Chicago's rough south side now resembles, as you can see, a bombed-out hulk. It's battered and crumbling after years of neglect. But this building, believe it or not, can claim a proud past. It has a notorious and colorful history. Its most infamous guest by far lived right up there in the fifth floor corner room. According to survivors of that era, he could be a genial, even charismatic guy, quick with a joke and generous with a buck, but dominant was his dark side, his attraction to physical violence, his quick, explosive temper, his ability to commit cold-blooded murder. He was, of course, Scarface Al Capone, America's public enemy number one. Now picture this hotel as it was when Al Capone lived here, truly an elegant and classy place. Hanging from the ornate ceilings were crystal chandeliers, while along these arched walls were fine art, lots of art. The floor was covered with ornate and beautiful tile mosaics. But Capone still transformed this place into a haven for crime and vice. For instance, in the lobby back there, armed men carrying Tommy guns were on patrol constantly. The fellow who ran the cigar stand out here was also the house bookmaker, always carrying a loaded 45 automatic in his waistband. Armed lookouts also monitored the elevators. Up in the floors of the hotel, there were brothels for Capone-controlled prostitutes and living quarters for his legion of armed men. In exploring this hotel, and believe me, we have climbed or crawled through the whole structure from the very top to the very bottom, we have found some fascinating things, like escape tunnels that the experts and eyewitnesses tell us were used by Capone and his men to split out of the hotel in the case of a raid by police or rival gangsters. There are also these hidden staircases. You can see them now only because we have torn the wall away, the walls that stood here until we began our process of excavation and exploration. There's another one over here. Check it out. Look, a hidden staircase that Capone could use in the hotel. A raid happens. They come in the front door. He just came down this hidden staircase and then disappeared through a tunnel system that we'll show you later on. But over here is the main event. This is what you've come to see, and this is why we're here. This massive concrete chamber, which some believe was built for Al Capone. Look at this electric wiring, for example. We have spoken to the electrician who put, or rather the son of the electrician, who installed this wiring. The man said that he was working for Al Capone at the time he did the job. And why would you need electricity in a sealed chamber? 
Now, what, if anything, this vault contains, we have no idea. But we're going to find out tonight, because we're going to take this wall down. It's about 5,000 pounds. The concrete is 22 inches thick. It's coming down tonight. Now, due to the thickness that seals the vault area, the thickness of the concrete, we have already pre-sawed through it, and we've prepared it to be pulled out. It was a difficult and time-consuming job that actually began several weeks ago. But now we are ready to tear this massive slab away, and we're going to do it with the help of a miniature bulldozer. Believe it or not, we've lowered one into the basement. They call these babies uh, bobcats. Right, bobcats. We're going to take the bobcat, we're going to hook it up to the chains, and we're going to pull this wall down. All right, guys, John, OK, Jim, let's hook it up. Now, as these fellows are hooking the chains up to the bobcat, we're going to take our first short commercial break. But don't go away, because when we come back, that wall's coming down. OK, guys, let's do it. Get it set, get it set.